In this video clip, I want to give a few tips on how to succeed in this course, our Understanding Einstein course, or really uh, any course that you might be taking. And our, our first tip here is cultivate a growth mindset. Cultivate a growth mindset. What do we mean by this? Well, let me uh, start off by doing a little thought experiment. Einstein was famous for, for thought experiments. This one actually isn't uh, similar to one of Einstein's experiments, but it actually has been uh, done. There is a professor here at Stanford whose name is uh, Carol Dweck. Very well-known um, professor of psychology and has done a lot of research in this area. And in fact, let me just add here, that if you're, as I talk more about this, if you're interested in finding out more about it, she has a book for the general reader just called Mindset that talks about some of these ideas in more detail. We're just going to hit a, hit a high point here. So here's, here's this imaginary situation that actually uh, she set up with college students in this case. And she wants, she's told them, okay, imagine you're going to a class. It's your, your favorite class. You love the subject. You love the professor. And in class a day at the inner class, you get uh, the latest paper back or, or exam back, and you see a grade that you definitely didn't expect. Maybe you were thinking A or B range, and you're in the C minus, maybe a, even a D or something like that. And she asked them, imagine how you would feel in that situation. Be honest with yourself. What would your response be? And then she said, okay, you go out, go out of class, and you're on your way home, and maybe you don't quite come to a stop at a stop sign or, or something like that. You're going slightly too fast and you get pulled over, and you get a ticket. Okay? So now how do you feel about how the day is going? And then thirdly, you get home, you call up your best friend, and you want to commiserate a little bit, and your friend just says, oh, that's nice, and then sort of blows you off. And, and uh, how would you feel at that point? And as she analyzed these responses of, of these students, she discovered that they seemed to fit into sort of two categories. One category were feelings such as, you know, in terms of the, the paper exam, I, I just can't do this subject. I don't have what it takes. Um, how would they respond to it? They would go into their closet and pout. They would break something. They would eat chocolate or, uh, or whatever. Uh, and yet there's another set of responses uh, that, again, I, supposedly I, honest responses here. Students would say, well, I'd, I'd study smarter next time for the exam. Uh, I'd be more careful driving. I would uh, call back my friend and, and patch things up and, and talk it out and so on and so forth. And this was intriguing to her and others who were doing this research. And, and they did a number of other studies as well with this. And they, they seemed to find what uh, they called you know, more or less people in, in two camps. Uh, not hard and fast, but people who tended more toward either a fixed mindset, they called it, a fixed mindset, or a growth mindset. And those who tended toward a fixed mindset in terms of intellectual matters said, I have a certain amount of intellectual ability, ability uh, and I can't grow up more than that. My brain is just sort of set. Well, those who had a growth mindset said, essentially, you know what? I struggle at this, but I can get better at it. Uh, and so they had that, that growth mentality, that growth mindset. And actually, in, in brain research, that goes by a fancy name, more and more, Scientists are realizing that the brain uh, can be uh, characterized by neuroplasticity. It actually means that we can grow neurons in the brain. Our brains can get better. Now, certainly, there are certain times of life where uh, that occurs much more readily than other times. And yet, uh, just by taking a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, reminding ourselves that, yes, we can get better at something, they found that that can has, has an enormous effect on performance. They've actually studied students uh, going into like a freshman chemistry class, a very difficult class, and by asking them a few questions beforehand, they can more or less identify those who tend toward a more fixed mindset versus those who tend toward a growth mindset. Whether it's genetics, partly, personality, just upbringing, all those things can, can factor into it. But growth mindset versus fixed mindset. And then they track them in the class. And they found that both groups struggled. Many of them in both groups struggled. But the ones with a growth mindset 
had that, that resilience, that perseverance, that, that grit, sometimes it's called, to say, I'm not doing well in this course, but it's not that I've, I've reached my level of understanding that I can't understand anymore. I can't reach the next level. But uh, they persevered. And in the end of the course, they tended to get about one grade higher, those who had the growth mindset going in, than those who had the fixed mindset. And, and so, you, but you might say, well, what if, what if a fixed mindset is fixed, right? Then it's, you can't change it, right? You just either have the growth mindset or the fixed mindset. What Dweck and others have discovered, however, is that it actually can be changed. Just by the very fact of understanding that growth can occur and that you can uh, improve your understanding, it may be a struggle, but you can get to a better level of understanding that you can actually put somebody into a growth mindset. Dweck herself talks about in her book how she has a tendency toward a fixed mindset. And it's been many years of reminding herself that of, of the results of her research that it's important to take a growth mindset to a subject if you want to break through some of that struggle of understanding and, and get to the next level. So uh, cultivate a growth mindset. Remind yourself that your brain is not fixed, that it actually can learn new things can improve your understanding no matter how old you are or where you are in your current level of, of understanding. You can always reach a higher level of, of understanding. Uh, it doesn't mean everybody will reach the same level of understanding, of course, and everybody starts at the same level, but you as an individual can improve that level of understanding. And certainly when we are taking a course in understanding Einstein, right, the special theory of relativity, uh, we need to remind ourselves that Yes, it's, some of the concepts may be difficult, but uh, with some work, with some thought, with some practice, we can actually get to a higher level of understanding, a deeper level of understanding. Okay, so cultivate a growth mindset. And by the way, just as an aside here, uh, for those of you who have kids, or maybe in the future might have kids, uh, this is very important because often we will say if um, a child comes home with a, with a good grade, you'll say, you must be really smart at that. It's, it's natural, right? Natural praise uh, that we, we give children. And yet, what Dweck and others have found, that type of praise actually is counterproductive because it, it inculcates the fixed mindset in the student that they're smart uh, and they have a certain level of intelligence, but they think that's, that is it, that's the level. If in, instead you praise their effort, you must have worked really hard at this that uh, sort of inculcates a growth mindset in uh, students and, and children. So basically, praise effort, not intelligence. That's just a little aside uh, along the, with this. Again, Carol Dweck's book, very interesting book on, on mindset if you want to read more about these things. But for our purposes, just remind yourself, and, and for some of us, we have to remind ourselves a lot, cultivate a growth, growth mindset. Okay, we won't spend as long a time on, on these others as that one, but that's very, very important. Uh, number two, which relates a little bit to, to number one here, and that is knowledge is constructed, not, knowledge is constructed, not received. Sometimes we have this idea that, especially listening to video clips or lecture or, or whatever, that just we're pouring the information into our brain and we hope some of it sticks in there someplace. But actually, the process of understanding something, of getting a better understanding of something, is a construction process. A good analogy is like building a tall building, building a skyscraper, any building. You've got to lay a good foundation and, and then build on, on that foundation. And so sometimes we're trying to build on floor 12 when we haven't really built floors six through eight very well, and floors nine, 10, 11 don't even exist, and we're trying to do something on floor 12. So knowledge is constructed, not received. It's a process of construction, and you want to lay those foundations for that, that process so you can build on it. Again, sort of the growth mindset uh, there, that growth is occurring, but it's a process of construction, not just sort of pouring information into our brains. Uh, so again, remind ourselves about that. It's a, it's a construction process throughout any course that you may be taking. Okay, knowledge is constructed, not received. And number three, embrace the struggle. 
because this construction process is often a struggle. And we talked about that a little bit with the growth mindset as well. And Einstein has a wonderful quote on this. He, he says that it is not the result of scientific research that ennobles humans and enriches their nature. Okay, so he's talking about ennobling humans, enriching our nature. But what, what actually does it? It's the struggle to understand while performing creative and open-minded intellectual work. So he, he emphasizes it's the struggle to understand. And, and certainly, Einstein, you know, he didn't know the term growth mindset, but he definitely had a growth mindset. He struggled for years on, on some of these things we'll be talking about, the special theory of relativity, to, to understand uh, what was going on. In fact, he even talked later on about how he'd reached a point of psychic tension. He just could not figure it out, and yet he persevered and, and really sort of embraced that struggle to understand. Uh, we had the advantage of, of falling in his footsteps. He was blazing new trails. We we're following in those, those footsteps. But even so, concepts aren't always easy. Um, the math for some of us might uh, be a little a little tricky at times because it's been a while since we've had it, but as I've mentioned before, we'll have a, a math review video clip you can, you can watch. And, of course, you also have the option of, of focusing on the qualitative aspects of the co course, taking a qualitative approach. But embrace the struggle because that's an ennobling, enriching uh, experience. And when you are able to get to the other side, as it were, that's when a real feeling of accomplishment uh, occurs. So embrace the struggle. Uh, actually, number four here, let me, we're going to need a little more room for this, so let me uh, race our first three. Those are, those are more general concepts. Let's just do some, some practical tips. Um, first practical tip is, I should have mentioned this at the very beginning here, but we'll mention it now, take notes. As you watch these video clips, it's very easy just because we're in the habit of you know, watching what YouTube videos or TV or whatever that we're not used to taking notes. Take notes though. There's something about the writing process that enables stuff to get into our brain and stick a little bit more than if we're just watching something. Uh, so, so take notes. And uh, in many cases, we'll have handouts to go along with the video clips to, to even encourage you to, to take, uh, take notes. A handout like with an outline and spaces to take notes or, or use your own notebook, of course. So um, take notes is, is first. Uh, visualize. As I mentioned, Einstein was famous for his, his thought experience. We'll be doing some of those as, as well. But you know, just sort of get pictures in your mind. Try to Try to even sketch it out, you know, so com combine taking notes and, and visualizing something if it helps to, uh, to sort of get a picture of what's, what's going on. So visualize. Um, thirdly here is uh, repeat. What do we mean by that? Well, you know, the great thing about things like video clips is that you can watch them again. And studies have shown that our understanding of something, if you... Uh, watch a video clip or attend a lecture, our level of understanding, what we actually remember, goes down fairly quickly. But if you, within 24 hours of first viewing something or listening to uh, a lecture, if you review that material, if you repeat that material, uh, in a sense, our uh, remembrance, our memory, goes up by about 40%. And so, Essentially, what you want to do, and people have done studies of, when do you ha what's the best schedule for this repetition? So maybe within the first 24 hours, so it kicks it up again, and then it will gradually go down again. Maybe two days later, it kicks it up again, then maybe a week later, and so on and so forth. We don't have to be uh, that precise uh, for our purposes, but just the, the whole notion of, of repetition to, again, to get things to stick in our brain. Important to, re important to repeat uh, the material. Now, another thing along with that is, how do you repeat the material? And this point is testing is better than rehearsing. Um, so we're, we're talking about studying now in terms of studying material. Testing is better than rehearsing. Too often, I see students who when they're studying for an exam or studying material uh, that they've previously worked on, 
they're just sort of reading through. You know, they've got all their yellow highlighting in the textbook, and they're just sort of reading through it again. They say, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I get that. Studies, again, have shown that if you're just sort of rehearsing the material in your mind, again, it doesn't work as well. It's more effective to actually test yourself, make up questions about the material. You, if, it's, if there's a textbook involved, uh, there are questions in the textbook you can work on. And, and in our course, we'll have many uh, assessment quizzes to just help in that testing process. It, for whatever reason, it engages the brain more if we actually have to solve a problem or answer a question rather than just sort of review the material uh, in terms of rehearsing the material. Now, obviously, there are many cases where rehearsing is important, um, musical instruments and so on and so forth. But in this case of studying we're talking about here, testing is better than rehearsing. Uh, and uh, then E here, this one will not be popular. It is don't multitask. Because we all like to, to multitask. Again, studies have shown when they, they've uh, looked at people who try to multitask, it, it just doesn't work very well. Uh, in, in fact, let me give you, you know, I mentioned the Carol Dweck book a little bit uh, ago. Uh, another good book, if you're interested in the sort of the, the brain science behind some of this practical advice, it's a book called Brain Rules by John Medina. Uh, and uh, so Brain Rules. Uh, there's a website, I believe it's www.brainrules.net. Very fascinating book. Uh, talks about brain science, but then the practical implications. And it turns out the brain has what they sometimes call uh, an at attentional focus. It focuses attention. It can only focus attention on one thing at a time. Now we can switch back and forth between things, but there's a slight delay. And then you lose focus on one thing when you switch to another thing. So it's like you know, you're doing something and email comes in, and so then you switch focus to the email, or your Facebook page, or, or whatever, or that, that uh, you know, text message that, that just comes through. Um, and another interesting thing they found is the people who think they are best at multitasking are actually the worst. Okay, So if you think you're really good at multitasking, you may have to question yourself uh, a little bit there. Uh, so especially in, in studying something, sometimes because of just the lies we lead, it's hard for us to focus attention. So let me just give you one brief technique to, to help. It's called the Pomodoro. The Pomodoro technique. Some of you may know Pomodoro is Italian for tomato. So what's, what's the idea here with this tomato technique? Well, the, the, it comes from those uh, kitchen timers that are shaped like a tomato but with a little twisty top, and you can twist it and then set the timer, and then it goes bing after however many minutes you set it for. So that's where the name comes from. The idea is this. Whether you have a tomato timer or whatever kind of timer you have, set it for 20 minutes. Then focus your attention on whatever you're doing, say uh, studying material, working on something, for 20 minutes. And then timer goes off, bing, you get a five-minute break. Check your email, Facebook page, messages, whatever at that point. And then you're back again after five minutes, 20 more minutes, five-minute break, 20 more minutes if you have a, a, a challenge with multitasking or always being, uh, you know, your, your focus of attention is, is always shifting. And so that you will get better results that way with the uh, so-called Pomodoro technique, just like the brain rules, www.brainrules.net, if you search do a search for um, Pomodoro technique on the internet. You can find a number of websites that tell more about that. But that's the basic idea. Okay, one more thing. So that practical tips. Finally, this is uh, number five. We'll introduce a little Latin phrase here. Festina lente. Stina lente. Some of you may have uh, have heard this, may know about it. What's in English? It is make haste slowly. Somewhat of a contradiction in terms, but the idea here is essentially don't go too fast. Don't get ahead of yourself. And especially in a course like this where um, we want to get a, a deeper understanding of some of Einstein's ideas. Uh, we're going to try to practice this. Make haste slowly. Now, for some of you, that means 
that will be going maybe a little too slowly. You'll want to jump ahead. Well, the great thing, of course, is with video clips, to a certain extent, you can uh, jump ahead a little bit in the course, or you can fast forward through the video clip if you think we're going a little bit too, too slowly. So try to remind ourselves throughout the course, uh, make haste slowly because haste is, in a sense, the enemy of understanding and especially deeper understanding. And of course, that's our goal in this course, to, to understand Einstein at a deeper level. So uh, some practical tips for how to succeed in this course or really any course.